Welcome back to Prime. Five-year-olds don't just vanish. Those are the words from retired homicide detective Chris McDonough. He has spent his career looking into high-profile cases from John Benet Ramsey to Elizabeth Smart. Now he's focusing his attention on the disappearance of Summer Wells as the host of the interview room, and we continue to follow Summer's case as well here on Prime. Chris is back with us tonight. Chris, uh, good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for inviting me. So Summer's parents, Don and Candace, have been the target of threats, accusations that they had something to do with Summer's disappearance. They have denied any involvement. They say that she was abducted. They have passed a polygraph test. At this point, the sheriff is saying anything's on the table. All people are persons of interest. But has the public jumped to conclusions too soon on these parents without the evidence to back this up? Yeah, I think uh, everybody is innocent till proven guilty, for sure. Uh, and at this point, uh, you know, there are just, uh, as your reporter has you know, pointed out, Brian, that there's just too many moving parts here. Uh, you know, there are a couple of theories that still, you know, need to be nailed down. And obviously, the authorities don't have that those pieces yet. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the property, uh, Chris. You spent some time there on the family's property. You went inside the house. Uh, you went into Summer's room and you say that it encapsulated her so i want to show some of this video for folks at home and i want us uh, to walk through exactly what you saw uh, inside this home so this is uh candace showing me essentially uh where the boys were sitting they were sitting right there at that table uh looking at that tv uh playing video games um, summer went down into the basement she's pointing to this uh, you know, table here that has a basically a crawl space into it. Uh, and down into that crawl space uh, goes down into the parents and Summer's room. Um, so I asked her if she would take me down there. She she did. And so we crawl through there. So now can, one I interesting stop, can I stop you real quick, Chris? Because that so this is the only way to get to Summer's and the parents room is through this crawl space. Right. This okay. is the way she said Summer went into that uh, uh, basement. Why do they have it set up like that? Uh, that is a great question. I, I don't have that answer. Okay. Continue. So we get down there, and of course, you know, this is Summer's room here that you're seeing. Uh, all of the items in the back corner belong to Summer. Uh, there is a mattress on the floor, the two bunk beds. Uh, the windows are secured with um, reflective uh, type of um, materials. Um, and so you can tell this is, you know, it, it's, it's pretty, um, pretty striking pretty quickly mm -hmm. uh, for a five-year-old to be in this environment. Chris, you know, the other three boys, Summer's brothers, were removed from the home, taken into protective custody. Are they key uh, to understanding anything in this case and her disappearance? Is there a chance that they are able to shine some light on, on what may have happened? You know, from my opinion as a uh, you know, retired investigator, uh, they would be, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And... In terms of the parents and their past, uh, that has also uh, been something that, that is much talked about. Um, Candace filed for an order of protection against her husband, Don, saying that she was afraid of being hurt. She was afraid for those kids. That was likely part of why they were removed from the home. How do investigators take that information and also anything the kids might know and try to piece this puzzle together? Yeah, Marty, that's a great question. So, uh, you know, from with a five-year-old child, obviously time is of the essence. So uh, uh, the first officer on the scene quickly wants to assess, you know, who had last contact, uh, what were those conditions in relationship to that contact, how much time has elapsed uh, before the last person saw the child. And so immediately you want to start talking to the parents and you want to try to separate them. And as you go along, you know, trying to get the information initially about the child, uh, then the parents' background becomes significant in relationship to an investigative process as more resources are, are arriving on the scene. Chris, police say that there was no evidence of foul play, yet they issued an Amber Alert. Um, how can they be so sure? Uh, well, that's a great question. They're, the investigative process is still, you know, ongoing. It could be an accident. Um, 
It could be, you know, something, you know, um, an intentional act of some sort. I think the investigators, uh, and we heard Sheriff, Sheriff Lawson even say today, that everything is still on the table. Mm -hmm. You have been in contact with, with the parents, Don and Candace. Are you still in touch with them now? Uh, not currently, no. What's the deal with this red truck? Um, it is potentially a piece of this puzzle. Have you heard anything about the truck? Has it led to, to any evidence or information for investigators? Um, well, at this point, uh, TBI has reported that the red truck, uh, they want to try to contact that uh, individual uh, who may have been driving. A, a, there is a witness who is really vague about whether it was around the area on the 14th or the 15th. So it could have been the day before or the day of uh, Summer's disappearance. Uh, however, I think what they want to do is just check the box uh, to eliminate that truck. They, they have eliminated a lot of red trucks in that area. Hmm. How closely would investigators be looking at um, family and friends of both Candace and Don, this, this inner circle of people that they know, um, especially given the fact that uh, Don has admitted that they had some wrong friends, or at least Candace did? Uh, that would be significant. Uh, and you, you want to, you know, again, you want to look at the abduction theory and you have to think, you know, how high of a risk would um, a subject who would want to, you know, take a child, a five-year-old, uh, how high of a risk would that suspect take? Uh, and in that terrain uh, and coming up that hill with the information that summer between two and ten minute time frame was in that basement, you know, the, the universe would have to be 100% on schedule for all those stars to align. So that's where you want to start, you know, shifting your focus in relationship to, you know, uh, taking a look at the inner circle, uh, who had access to that property and, and or who had access to the, to the parents. Chris, five months is a long time uh, for this little girl to be missing. As more time goes by, how optimistic are you that this case is solvable? that we can find Summer and bring her home safely? Well, I'm always optimistic. Uh, you know, statistically though, uh, you know, those, that optimism starts to dwindle. Uh, however, uh, I do believe this case will be solved. Uh, I think they have the uh, correct resources on it with TBI, FBI, as well as the Hawks County Sheriff's Department in the lead. Uh, and I, I'm, I, like you, and the rest of the nation, are, are praying. I'm praying that uh, they do find her alive. I share in that prayer. It has our attention. It has the attention of a lot of people on social media. And uh, those folks on social media are relentless, as are we. Chris McDonough, we appreciate your time and, as always, your insight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.